So we did a previous podcast on how bad of an owner Nelson Scalabino was, but this was the topper. He brought in a Super Bowl starter and paid him 600000 I think it was American at the time, which is an exorbitant amount of money in 1981 to lead any team. And this guy became almost a laughingstock. On the TV show Bizarre, to use these last name, not Scalabanius, but this guy's last name as a replacement for a curse word. It was a whole, uh, you know, uh, genre in itself. Today, we're not going to be talking about the full career of this player, but his short and unsuccessful CFL career. Of course, you have to be talking about 1980 Super Bowl starter for the LA Rams, Vince Ferragamo. Now, Ferragamo broke in with the LA Rams in a 1977 season and uh, basically was a backup to Pat Hayden in the 79 campaign. But after leading the Rams to uh, road victories over the Cowboys and Tampa Bay Bucks in the playoffs, when he replaced again Pat Hayden, who had broke a finger in midseason, he started in Super Bowl XIV. Uh, and he was the first quarterback to start a Super Bowl in the same season at his first career start. Now, he did play well for three quarters before losing 31-19. to Now, he had his best season the next year in 1980 when he threw for 30 touchdowns, but eventually were defeated by Dallas in the wild card game, 34-13. Now, 81, this is kind of bizarre. Let's put it in perspective here. Because the Alouettes were a spring and summer league, uh, any free agents or unsigned players were available at the time to the CFL. Now, Scalabania had deep pockets. He did not only decided to, to sign Ferragamo away from the Rams, he went for the great wide receiver, Billy White Shoes Johnson, who basically one of the, the best pound-for-pound wide receivers and uh, punt and kickoff returners in NFL history, and the versatile Jake Scott. Now, he also signed highly touted U.S. college running back, David Overstreet. Now let's put this in perspective. The Alouettes had Fred Blitnikoff the year before. He signed the big draft pick Tom Cousineau a short while before as well. Now they were hoping that Ferragamo would get Montreal back to the, the Grey Cup like they'd done over the last few years. However, it all went horribly wrong for Scalbania and the Alouettes in 81. Now uh, Ferragamo uh, couldn't adapt to a CFL game because as we know the CFL has two downs uh, uh, to get a first down instead of uh, three and, uh, you know, fourth down. So uh, the other big names didn't perform uh, 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 to their capacity, even though uh, uh, White Shoes uh, Johnson uh, had uh, flashes of brilliance. Now the Alouettes floundered that season and finished last in the East. Now the squad lost a ton of money and Scalbania's whole financial empire became in trouble. Now, uh, Ferragamo made forty-seven thousand dollars in change in nineteen eighty. So he got ten times the salary to come into CFL six hundred thousand. Now his re- re- record was this two and thirteen. Now he was eventually demoted to to back up to Jerry Detilio in the latter half of the season, and then third string quarterback for the final three, because uh, at the time uh, Montreal had an option to bring in quarterbacks. The third quarterback was used uh, quite often. He brought in Ken Johnson in a trade. Now, uh, Farragut's last game in the CFL was lost to the Ottawa Rough Riders in the Eastern semifinal. He didn't make the playoffs that year, but the East was so weak that, uh, you know, they, they, they passed by. Now, uh, uh, Ferragamo didn't uh, play in that game as he watched from the press box. His stats during his one season in Montreal were uh, 175 for 342, uh, 51% uh, percentage, 2,175 yards, with seven touchdown passes and 25 interceptions. So let's put this in perspective, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, $600,000 for seven touchdowns. He was getting paid. $95,000 a touchdown. Good work, you can find it. Now, in 1982, uh, Ferragamo returned to the Rams, but unfortunately, the stench of Ferragamo continued. Scalbania, in the spring of 82, turned the franchise back over to the league, who had to scramble then to find a new owner. That this will turn out to be Charles Bronfen of Seagrens and the Montreal Expos. Now, the damage uh, was done, however, and the renamed Concords limped on until 1987, 
uh, before folding just prior to the start of the season. Now, the, the current Montreal Alouettes have nothing to do with the old Alouettes because Baltimore or the Baltimore CFLers or Baltimore Stallions decided to move to Montreal shortly after they won a Grey Cup. So, who killed the Alouettes? Was it Scalbania? Uh, pretty much. Was it Ferragamo? No, I don't think Ferragamo killed it because it's hard for an NFL quarterback to adjust to the bigger field and the two downs. Well, you say two down, like three downs, but they always get. And how it works, there's no running game in the CFL, really. It's option passes. Ferragamo at the time wasn't experienced enough to run as a veteran quarterback, like somebody like uh, Joe Barnes that came in. And although he had an okay career after he returned to the NFL, uh, it didn't uh, really work out. Now, uh, in college, don't forget, he was a sporting news college football player of the year in 76. And an All-American, he came to the CFL and the NFL uh, with a great, uh, great fanfare. But what's kind of bizarre, ladies and gentlemen, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated twice in December of 1980. And of course, the infamous cover, which we'll never see again, a Montreal Alouette on the front of Sports Illustrated, which I, I'm going to present in the podcast here. So the whole experience with Ferragamo, 3 out of 10, when he first came in, there was a lot of plug, a lot of... Uh, information all that and uh, you know uh, after football you know Ferragamo's uh, done quite well for himself he's into real estate he's into wine he does uh, non-profit work and for that I have great respect but he had no shape or form uh, Warren Moon came into the, the CFL with the guns blazing Ferragamo wasn't a gunslinger Ferragamo would be considered close uh, the only comparison I could give would to, to a young Eli Manning, and I want you to listen to this for a second. Eli Manning would make mistakes, but when given an opportunity to learn from them, but Ferragamo was too young to take over a marquee franchise, and Montreal was a marquee franchise, because you have to remember he appeared, he won three, super, three Grey Cups in the 1970s, 74, 70, 74, and 77, appeared uh, in, in the heavy playoffs for a number of years, he lost in 75, and uh, the... They were a marquee team, and they were just up there in the fan base with the Al- the Expos and the Canadians. I mean, Alouette, one of the nicest logos you'll ever see, and that drew fans from 2 to 102. But Vince Ferragamo, nice-looking guy, kind of a junior Joe Namath, but just like Joe Namath sometimes at his own bar, he would strike out, and he struck out in the CFL big time. Big time. Doesn't mean he's a bad guy. He just basically was a rotten decision. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's our latest in our Montreal Alouettes Vintage uh, Sports Files. Thanks for listening. Bye.